what finance needs in order to advance and to actually solve meaningful problems in a reliable way is a kind of machinery that other fields of science use to solve their problems. They're very hard problems. Like, for instance, the Large Hadron Collider. There is no equivalent to the Large Hadron Collider in finance. There is just not this sort of experimental setting or, or, or computational power. Well, quantum computing offers this possibility, or at least in that direction. It offers the possibility of having a machine that has an exponential computer power, exponentially greater computer power than digital computers. So what is quantum computing? Quantum computing is, you can think of it as a field of research first, and then, of course, there is an application, but it's a field of research where we develop algorithms that use the very basic laws of nature. In order to solve a problem, we use the laws of nature. So how does it work? It sounds something like strange, but in fact, it works. And we will see some examples. The field was inaugurated in the 1980s by uh, Benioff and the very well-known Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman. So Feynman, in 19, back in 1981, wrote a very famous paper where he made the following argument. Quantum mechanics deals with um, probabilistic problems. It deals with problems that involve probability and where the system does not reach some sort of deterministic solution. And yet, we are using deterministic machines, meaning the traditional binary style computer, to solve probabilistic problems. It makes no sense. So what he proposed is to develop a new kind of computer device that would be probabilistic. It would not be deterministic, and that's what a quantum computer is. And everything came, you know, back in 1981, it was kind of, uh, I guess, science fiction or uh, a nice idea. But then, a mathematician back in 1994, Peter Shore, proved that it is possible mathematically to develop quantum algorithms, meaning algorithms that run in that quantum machine, that can crack code as a matter of as simply as you can do additions. You know, the, the a standard uh, procedure for uh, encryption these days is the RSA uh, protocol. Essentially, what makes RSA a very good encryption mechanism is that it poses a integer factorization problem that is very hard to solve by trial and error. So this is a very hard problem. It requires a traditional computer millions of years to run some calculations in order to solve a, a problem that is about to change in one minute, because within one minute you're going to get a new key. That's what gives encryption it's security. It poses a problem that can only be solved within a million of years, but you have a minute to solve it. Well, for a quantum computer, it's actually a matter of seconds to solve this problem. How does uh, quantum computing achieve this sort of computational power? If you're familiar with supercomputers, you know that the interesting fact about quantum computers is something called parallelism. The, the holy grail of supercomputing is you take a problem, you chop it into pieces, and these pieces can be computed simultaneously. So a task that linearly would take hours, now it takes a matter of seconds, because you have many different threads, many different processes solving this problem all simultaneously. So that's really the magic about supercomputing. 